Hello everyone, this is Assistant Professor Dharam Unarkat. Welcomes you all to this subject, Effective Technical Communication. So let's start with the module number one, that is Dynamics of Communication. The topics that we will cover in module one are first, Process of Communication, second, Dynamics of Communication, the name of the module itself, the topic third, fourth and fifth are Kinesics, proximics and paralinguistic features which are the components of the nonverbal communication and the topic 6 and 7 that is importance of intercultural communication and importance of interpersonal communication so this total seven topics we will going to cover in module 1 so let's start with the topic number 1 that is process of communication first of all let's understand what is communication Communication can be defined as the exchange of information, ideas, knowledge between the sender and the receiver through an accepted code of symbols. So here two persons require one is called sender and the other is called receiver. For sharing information, two parties are required, the sender and the receiver without whom the communication which is an interactive process as we know the communication is the interactive process between the two persons here the sender and the receiver which is which cannot be takes place between these two at any given time one is active and the other is passive so at a given time the sender is active and the receiver is passive or the receiver is active and the sender is active so it is the alternate process through what they have to communicate. The sender and the receiver mutually influence each other. It is termed effective only when the receiver receives the message intended by the sender in the same perspective. Otherwise, it becomes miscommunication. Now, let's understand the communication cycle which involves various elements. The elements are sender, encoding, message, channel, receiver and the decoding. The first step in the process of communication is formulation wherein the sender forms the content of the message to be sent. This formulation depends on the level of experience, intelligence, also the level of the knowledge and the purpose of the sender. The content once formed is called message. The sender encodes the message using a basic tool. This tool is nothing but the language used that is words, action, sign, object or the combination of the all these. Once encoded using proper language, the message is ready to be delivered. Now the sender can send the message through any channel. The receiver receives the message, decodes it and acts on it. If the message received is the same as the message sent, there will be an appropriate response. If not, there will still be a response but probably an inappropriate or unexpected one. The transmission of receiver response to the sender is called feedback. Now the receiver decodes the message, he sends the response again to the sender and which is known as feedback. Feedback is essential as it measures the effectiveness of the communication. So it is the process of the communication which involves this elements. Let's understand the process taking an example. Let me give a brief first. Here the process of communication takes place in the site where a construction worker is working into the site and a regular civilian or you may say a human is entering into the site without permission. So here, who is the sender? The construction worker. So first the communication start with the sender. The sender is one that begins the communication process because they want another to understand their message. So here the construction workers want to say something to the civilian or the human being who is entering the site. Second comes the message. The message the construction worker form is you cannot enter this is an dangerous areas. So this is the message. The message is the information that is exchanged between whom? Between the sender and the receiver. It can be a verbal or non-verbal. This two word we will discuss in the upcoming videos. But the message is in the form of verbal or non-verbal. 
then comes the channel as we have discussed the channel is the path through which the sender sends the message to the receiver here which path he have selected through speaking the channel is the space or the means in which the message is transmitted then comes the receiver now through the channel the message is delivered to the receiver here the receiver is a civilian or a normal human being the receiver is the one who receives or believes that have received the message now the receiver decodes the message as we have discussed in the process he decodes the message and give response to the sender this response is known as feedback here he says okay i apologize the feedback is the observable response to another message and this feedback is again transmitted to the sender and the last in the process of communication there is a noise around the communication and which reduces the effectiveness of the communication here the noise is due to the jcb or xyz the noise is anything that interferes a message and is usually temporary so this is the process of communication now let's have a look on essential of effective communications which are as follows first the well defined communication environment as we have discussed the environment carries a various noise which reduces the effectiveness of the communication so there must be a well defined and a good environment so the the effectiveness of the communication increases second the cooperation between the sender and the receiver there must be a good and the proper cooperation or you may say the attitude between the sender and the receiver there must be a good selection of an appropriate channel here in the example we have seen the channel is through speaking the best way how the sender delivers the message to the receiver is known as channel that must be an appropriate next is correct encoding and decoding by the of the message by both the sender and the receiver and as we have discussed the last is the feedback the response of the receiver to the sender is known as feedback as we have discussed feedback is essential as it shows the effectiveness of the communication so the proper feedback by the receiver to the sender is essential so these are the points which are essential for the effective communication and now let's have a look on the importance of the communication the first the basis of coordination in the organization the manager explains to the employee the organizational goals the mode of the achievement and also the interpersonal relationship among them this provides coordination between various employees and also the departments thus here the communication act as the basis of coordination in the organization second is fluent working a manager coordinates the human and physical element of the organization and to run it smoothly and effectively this coordination is not possible without a proper communication so the co manager coordinates between the human beings and the physical element of the organization this coordination is not possible without the proper communication third is the basis of decision making proper communication provides information to the manager that is useful for decision making no decision could be taken in the absence of information thus communication is the basis for taking the right decision fourth comes the increases managerial efficiency the manager conveys the target and issues instructions and allocates job to the subordinates all of this aspects involves communication thus the communication is essential for the quick and the effective performance of the manager and the entire organization the fifth is increases cooperation and organizational peace as we know the communication the two way communication process promotes cooperation and mutual understanding amongst the worker and also between them this leads to free to less friction and thus leads to industrial peace in the factory or you may say the effective operations and the last is the 
boost morale of the employees good communication helps the worker to adjust to the physical and the social aspects of work it also improves the good human relations in the industry an effective system of communication enables the manager to motivate influence and satisfy the subordinates which in turn boost their morale and keeps them motivated so still there are many importance of the communication but this six we have seen which are mostly taking place in the organization first the basis for coordination second fluent working in the organization third the basis of decision making then comes the increase managerial efficiency fifth increases cooperation and organizational peace sixth boost morale of the employee so this six are the importance of the communication so in the first video we have covered the topic that we will discuss in the module number 1 then we have discussed the first topic that is process of communication its elements the effectiveness of the communication and the last we have seen the importance of the communication more topics of module 1 will be further discussed in the upcoming videos thank you